forgot to start recording. <laughs> um, Natalie, did you want to add anything to the scoring uh, or just personal experience? Um, just to add a specific example of Mariela was talking about, um, when I took subtest three, the first time I didn't pass it. Um, and for the constructed response, um, I got a question about a piece of art. And I was able to describe it and list the elements of art but I didn't have any support. And that's what they took off a lot of points um, off of. And I would just say, yeah, make sure that you do have that support and the knowledge, because that's important when they're grading your, your um, essays. And then really quick, just to emphasize, um, like it says on the PowerPoint, do not leave your, your constructed response blank because, um, you're better off writing something and getting some points for it because again, the constructor response is 30% of your score, right? So if you leave a response automatically blank, that is a huge chunk of that 30% that's already being taken off. So your best bet is, you know, if, if you feel like you may not be able to hit all three points, um, at least be able to hit two of the points, right? Um, and, and more, the most important ones would probably be knowledge and support. Um, so if you could just focus on those two aspects of your critical of your constructed response, um, you're going to get some points, right? And so the scoring again is it's 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 split up to seventy to thirty, but it also just depends on how well you do on the multiple choice and then how well you do on your thirty percent. Um, but yeah, definitely do not leave the responses blank. Just you know write whatever knowledge you have about it, and you know again if you don't pass the first time. Uh, you'll be able to see your score on your uh, constructed responses as far as what you need to improve on. And then you can just work from there. So that's just another key point to, to keep in mind. Does anyone have any questions about the scoring? Okay, we'll go ahead and move on. Um, so these are, so we um, got this again from the website. Um, so it's just kind of the domains, kind of uh, what some of the things that they mentioned that they will be testing you on. Um, so language and linguistics, kind of all of that. Um, I'm not sure if um, some of you wanted to, or Mariela and, or Natalie wanted to add a little bit about the domains in reading and language and literature. No? Okay. So those, there's another one. So the reading comprehension analysis um so these are some of the domains that they um that they um like, you know again this is all available for you um and so another one is the subject matter skills and uh, um abilities applicable consent domains in history so this is uh girl talking about social science so what they want is candidates apply and explain context from history and social studies including political science and government geography economics dem demography um anthropology physiology and sociology right so these are the things that they say that they will test you on so it's a little bit more specific on just saying oh this is history and science and so they even ask you some of the basics so explain basics like mon monarchy total totalitarianism limited government cultural diffusion so ethnicity gender social economic class so these are very specific ones that uh, you might want to look into kind of Maybe I would say get to know the definitions, what they mean, um, because there will be questions on this. Um, I don't know if you girls wanted to add something on that as well from the history part. Um, just really quick for both the reading language and literature and history aspects. Um, if you log on to the CTC website, and I'm sure Lupita will probably navigate it a little later on throughout the presentation. Um, but if you click on each subset, it tells you specifically what they're looking for in each domain, right? So there's three domains for um, each, uh, the reading language and literacy and literature and the history and social science. So if you familiarize yourself with what they're asking for in the domains on the CTC website, you're going to be able to have a better idea of what it is that you really need to study for. And so, um, when I looked at it, I was a little bit uh, overwhelmed because there was just so much information, right? But the thing is that all this information that they're asking for in the domains, 
they all intercorrelate with each other. So they're all related to each other in one way or another. So if you can, when you're looking at them and you, you, you see what they have in common, it'll be a lot easier for you to remember um, some of the questions that they ask for on the exam or even on the written response. So um, I would definitely recommend that you guys look at the, at the deep explanation of this on the CTC for each subset because it'll tell you what they're going to look for aside from what's also on this PowerPoint. It's a little bit more key detailed. Um, so look at those for sure and just kind of get yourself familiar uh, with each one of them. And then um, also just kind of divide, divide the, the two, right? So if you're going to focus solely on the reading language and literature, do that. And then once you feel confident enough in that, then you can kind of move to the history and social science. Um, because I made the mistake of studying all together for the subset one subset one all at one time and it was just too much information that I was overloading myself on so I, I I just split up the two and I and I you know spent some time on reading and language and then I also spent separate time on history and social science and then by the time that I took my test I was able to you know I guess separate the information and not feel that overwhelmness of just studying the whole section because they are pretty dense but again if you split them up however way that you you know or whatever way works for you um, it'll be a better way of just um, taking in all that information did you want to add anything Natalie yeah um, just to kind of share with you all what helped me specifically is like Mariela, break it up. Um, I focused on English first, and I just did one to two hours of studying each day. Um, and also break it up even more um, with the specific, like, like what you see here of history, there's also geography, economics, anthropology. Um, break those up. And if you go to YouTube and you type in those specific titles, like human migration the history of human migration then you can find a short documentary or just a little video of something that can help you if you're like a visual learner yeah thank you uh, does anyone have any questions okay so um these are kind of just like the um, preparation um, or strategies that we say preparation is key for sure as you as Mariela and Natalie have spoken it, it's a lot of practice and a lot of studying that you have to do uh, we do have books in our office um, I, you can see kind of Mariela's background that's all of our books um, so we um, are renting those you just need to email us so that we can uh, have someone in our office and you can come and pick it up if you are interested we have plenty of CC multiple subject books. Um, we also, again, do tutoring sessions um, because um, we have peer mentors that have taken the test. Uh, we are able to offer you that um, service for you. All you need to do is um, email us and we will get back to you. We are doing Zoom um, tutoring sessions, so if you are interested, just please let us know. Um, there is a lot of um, kind of like online resources, like Natalie mentioned, there is YouTube, and um, we are actually working on getting more resources from different schools, and we can also send that out to you. Um, so again, the main, main one that uh, I think we've talked about it is the CTC website. Um, getting familiar with that because that's kind of where everything's gonna be at, that's where the practice test is. Um, that is where you register, that is where you uh, kind of find everything. It's a really good starter. Um, if you're beginning to look at the CSA, what, what it is, like, you know, Mariela said, look at the domains, kind of take notes on that. So for sure, the CTC website will be the one that you really want to focus on as you're beginning, um, you're, you're um, studying for the test. We, uh, there's a teacher's test prep, um, and these are some of the books that um, students have, um, rented out and I um, have recommended. So I believe we have the Cliffs, um, we do have the Kaplan. So we do have some of these books also in our office. We have a lot more of the Cliffs test prep. Um, um, so basically these are kind of like the strategies and resources we say. You wanna start kind of um, 
Also time management, we talked about it yesterday. Um, timing yourself and we'll go over the website so you can see, I believe they have the practice test, both um, interactive and um, PDF form. So you are able to um, kind of take that practice test and time yourself, see how long you're taking. I know these are really big tests, um, but you know, taking a break, maybe you're taking it um, slow would be a good uh, strategy or resource. Um, I don't know if you girls want to add something else about strategies and resources that either we offer or that you know as well. Um, I think one of the key things about, you know, the strategies for taking these tests is definitely um, the timeline of preparation that you give yourself um, because uh, each test is, like I had mentioned before, pretty dense. And so from my experience and how I prepared myself for these exams was that I gave myself like a two month period um, of studying, solo studying, and then I took the test. And what I did was every day, uh, or most days, usually like five to six days of the week, I would study for two hours every single day, right? And so by the time that it came down to taking my test, I felt like I was prepared enough, right? Because I had I had studied enough, um, and I broke up I, I broke up each section and spent a certain amount of sec uh, time on that section. Um, but I just from helping out of the students and then my personal experience myself, and then from hearing from past um, you know credential uh, students who have taken these and now are teachers. Um, many will say that preparation really is key, um, and it's it's really about the studying because. Um, for me, I was a sociology major, and so I did not have any background knowledge on a lot of this, um, the subjects that I had to take tests on, because I hadn't done math in like three years, I haven't done a history class in like four years, or whatever it may be, so there was a lot of brushing up that I had to do, um, and a lot of the subject that, a lot of the information that is on each subject is information that is is elementary level based right you won't really be hearing a lot of history that you learn in college in those exams it's most of like what is going to be taught in k through six so it really is about you know going back and and just checking to see okay what do i need to refresh myself on um because i haven't you know i haven't had a history class in three years or whatever it may be um and also just, you know, everybody really is different. Everybody studies different. Everybody has different ways of learning. So I think that's also a key point that you should identify what are your study strategies, right? What, what do you work better with? Do you work better with reading books? Do you work better with, um, you know, watching videos? Like what, did it, what is it that helps you understand better this material? And then again, you do have us as a support who, you know, we've been through it and we, um, have been able to help students and provide, you know, just feedback and strategies of what may work and what may not work. Um, but definitely pace yourself um, because it's just, it, it, they are, um, I don't want to say they're hard tests, but they are just pretty dense, right? There's a lot of information that you need to kind of remember for each subset. Um, and so for me, I can tell you that teachers test prep helped me a lot um, also. So those videos, um, again, I printed out those domains that I mentioned on CTC. And as I studied each domain, I would go back and look and be like, okay, did I cover all these key points that this domain is asking for? Right? So I had those two. Um, I did have uh, the teachers test or the, the test prep book, those the, is it the yellow ones, I believe? They're the yellow, big, bulky ones. Those kind of helped me. So in different aspects, I use those as well. And then YouTube too. YouTube has a lot of great videos. Um, and there's just a lot of different ways of exp that people explain certain things. And it's just really about, you know, which video works best for you. So those are my um, key strategies and resources that I use that helped me pass my test. Um, and yeah, I don't, I don't know if Natalie, you want to share your experience. Yeah, I would say kind of um, just look into each one of these resources that we're sharing with you and see which one you think will work best for you. Like some people use flashcards and that works really well. But for me, I couldn't do that because I was just taking up a lot of my time. Um, so I went to YouTube and I started typing in specific 
um, videos that I was looking for and that helped me out a lot. I even found like songs about cells for the science portion and that that stuck to my head and it was silly but it helped me pass. Yeah. Okay. So now we'll go over some of the um, kind of things you might look for. So some of the questions that might be there. Um, so do you want to start? I'll start with the English part. Is that fine, Natalie? Okay. Yeah, that's fine. So I think the first one that we have was basically just the first one, and then I'll go through the other ones. So this one. Um, so I mean, I can give you some time to read it, but so so so. Some common vowel patterns are associated with more than one pronunciation. Um, so which of the following nonsense words illustrates a vowel pattern that is a highly consistent in its pronunciation? Um, so I'm not sure if you wanna go over the question. I know I, I also have the answer, just let me know. Do you want me to go to the next slide, Natalie, the answer? And you could you can talk. Yeah, uh, Mariela, are you doing English or? Oh, okay, I wasn't sure if you were gonna do it or you are you wanted me to do it. I can do it. That's fine. No worries. Um, so if you go back to the question, Lupita. Yeah. Um, so here they're asking you if you look at the question and you and you kind of analyze it. It's asking you about vowel patterns, right? And it's asking you. Um, which one is the highly consistent in pronunciation? So here you have to have um, pretty much the knowledge of what each vowel together makes. So for example, o, the OO and stuk, right? And then the OA and then the OW, we know that the W supports the O to make the long um, O sound here. So you, those are like things that you would have to remember from, you know, pretty much vowels, vowel patterns in this, uh, in this question, and then you have OU. So then I look at the answers, right? And then I go back and I look, what is the question asking me for? So it says, which of the following nonsense words illustrates a vowel pattern that is highly consistent in pronunciation, right? So they're looking for a highly consistent pronunciation um, in, in these vowel words that we have here. So if you look, the answer is B, I uh, think Lupita, had showed it already yeah right so we have the the vowel uh, oa which is again giving the long o sound so if you look at if you think about other words that have oa in it you're trying to look for that that pattern that is consistent so for example here we have the word like groan boat and load those all make the long o sound and the thing is with the other words um if you go back to the question lupita yeah the um the double o the o w and the o u always change they can always change to make different sounds even though they're the same vowel letters right so that means that those those words are not consistent in the vowel pattern that they have and here o a o will always make the long o sound no matter what word it's in so it doesn't change so those are like the key things that you have to look for in the questions because the questions are the question will ask you specifically what it's looking for which here it's highly consistent vowel pattern in the pronunciation and so it's a matter of just process of elimination of which ones okay what do you know about vowels and how often does the sound change for a vowel right so if if you know that the vowel changes its sound then you can start eliminating those um so those are just like key little things to look for in the questions um that'll help you understand a little bit better what they're looking for. But every time that I would read my question, I would just go back and be like, hey, what are they looking for? What, are, what, what do they want me to identify? So those are just things to think about when you're reading the question. Did you have, uh, did you have other ones that you wanted to go over or did you want me to just choose? Um, let me see, I think we could do, I think uh, I have chosen um, like a reading passage one. And yeah, also, if you, yeah, you can go to the reading passage one. Okay, I think it was this, it was a poem that I found. And then the next one would be like a constructive response. It was this one. Uh, slide 28. Okay. Yeah, 28. So, okay. So the poem, the poem 
the <laughs> the poem one will definitely be on the exam. There's definitely going to be a question about poems. So um, I would definitely brush up your knowledge on basically just what a poem is and what elements a poem carries. Um, because I honestly had like no idea about poems because I never really studied poems in English. And if I did, it was probably like years ago. So I definitely spent a lot of time recognizing the poem. And it even may be a, I don't know for you, Natalie, but I actually had a constructed response on a poem. Um, so that was, uh, that was also pretty important to just have that good memorization of what, what a poem means and what are the elements of it. And just to maybe be able to make sure to, that you can explain it. So here's one it question. So let me just say one thing. Um, if it doesn't, if you don't get a poem in your multiple choice, you will get it for the constructed response mm -hmm. and vice versa. Yeah. So just yeah. expect that. Yeah. So yeah, it'll be, that's how, yeah, I had mentioned that, that it's going to be on there either way. Mm -hmm. um, I had it as a constructed response, which was a little bit more difficult because I actually had to write about it. And here in a multiple choice, you kind of just have, you know, the four choices. So you're able to do a process of elimination in a sense. Um, so here they're asking you to read the poem, and then it's asking you to, um, the, text, the text uses which of the following conventions to achieve a spoken rhythm. So here the key word in this, in this question is conventions, right? So what do you know about conventions um, in poetry? So here um, the answer would be um, C. And so if you look, <laughs> the thing about these questions is that you have to be familiar with the vocabulary. So if you look at all the answers, you have to know what each one of these means, right? So if you don't, if, if you don't know what these answers mean, um, then you definitely have to go back and just kind of review the vocabulary of, of the poem section um, in, in whatever study material that you're using. It breaks it down pretty much on any material. Um, so here the response is C. And another thing that I would do when I had my, um, when I was doing my practice test, if I didn't know the answer um, to any of the questions, and I also didn't know what the vocabulary term meant, I would go back and I would read the explanation of the answer, and then I would write it out in my definition what that meant to me, right? So clearly, I'm, I'm not the type of person who can study off by memorizing a vocabulary word, so if I were to go look at what um, this answer meant, I wouldn't be able to write down like word for word and then remember it. I would just read it and be like, okay, what do, how did I understand it in my perspective? And then write out the answer that way. So that way I know that, you know, I have my, vi my version of what this means, which is kind of similar to what the long response is. Um, so that's another key thing to look for as well as just when you're studying for these things, make sure you know the vocabulary terms because that's what a lot of the, the literature portion is also is like asking, you know, like what are these conventions? Um, you know, what are like nouns, verbs, pronouns, stuff like that. They'll ask you for all those terms. So make sure to be familiar with that as well. So the next one that I um, was a constructive response. Um, so we can talk a little bit about what that is. And um, so this is the one that I saw on here. Okay, yeah. So this is a very common one as well. Um, I don't know about you, Natalie, but I definitely had a spelling one as a constructive response. Um, I the same one. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and I have heard from others too that it's not it's not identical to like this one, but it definitely has the same similar format. And it, the question varies as well, but you're definitely gonna expect to get a spelling um, or grammar or any of that aspect as a constructed response. So here, um, again, it, it says um, the fifth grade student attempts to spell a list of words um, that are read aloud. Shown below are the words of the students, of the student's spelling. And then it's gonna ask you like what, um, this one didn't really have the question, but it'll ask you like, okay, what is, what, what um, identify the issue that this fifth grade student is having, right? So here, a key thing to look at on the constructed response is that the student is in fifth grade, right? So 
you have to use your knowledge of what fifth grade level writing should look like and what um, what the student is lacking. So here, if you go to the answer, um, it'll it'll tell you right. So this is the this is an example of what a, a good critical response would be. So it tells you that the student um, does demonstrate sound uh, sound syllable relation um, when it comes to the beginning sounds but they have problem with the blending, right? Um, so for example, the OW, I mean, yeah, the OW in yellow um, is a, cons a consonant uh, double, doubling that they don't understand. So it breaks down basically like each um, letter, uh, no, I'm sorry, each word. If you wanna go back to the list a little bit. Yeah. Um, they're gonna have, they're all gonna have this, the same issue, right? So for example, here, O, E, and yellow, those are vowels. Um, the t in nature, um, he has, or the student has the T, U, uh, T, U, R um, problem. And then in muffin, they got that right. Doctor, C, T, so it's like the, con it's the consonant doubling blends that the student has trouble with. But the issue with the critical responses is that they're looking for you to be able to identify strategies to that will also help the student as well as um, I guess identifying what's wrong with what the student is doing. Um, so if you look at the responses, they're all those are all pretty um, I guess well written out responses of what it should look like. I know for me, um, I try to stay pretty, um, I guess, to the point of what the student uh, did wrong. And um, I, and then another thing is that I looked a lot onto the actual domain of like what subject or what domain that this falls under, right? So I went back and I worked with like all the consonants, all the vowels, the blendings, um, the digraphs, all those are all going to be good um, ideas to have in mind when you're responding to critical responses that have to do with spelling and grammar. Okay. And was there another one or was that it? I think that was it for the English portion, um, but I'm wondering if anyone has questions or um, I don't know if something came up. I know I didn't stop for the other problems. We can go back to the problems we did if anyone has questions. Okay, so then now we'll move on to history and we'll do the same, um, I'll pick a few ones and talk about, about the, the constructive response as well. Or I don't know if you had picked some, Natalie, that you wanted to go over specifically. Yeah, I have a few. Um, okay. yeah, there's also one thing that I think is um, important to point out about the constructive responses. Don't think that you have to write like a five paragraph essay or even as long as this example here as long as you're answering the question that they're asking and you, you get to the point, then you're fine. You don't have to worry about like your sentence structure, obviously make it easy to read, but you don't have to worry too much about that. That's more of um, what's important on the C best writing portion. Mm -hmm. And so like we had, and that's a good point. Thank you, Natalie, for that. Um, you, it's just, you're, you can be concise to, the constructed responses, because you're also limited to the amount of words that you can type for the constructed response, which is purposeful because they want you to get to the point, which is like, what's the purpose? Do you have evidence? And do you have knowledge on what the question is? So um, those are the, the, the three things that you should always keep in mind. And again, like Natalie said, you don't have to write like a huge paragraph. Um, as long as you can get to the point and use, um, you know, fill in those three aspects, purpose, knowledge, and support and you'll be good. Okay. Uh, which one did you want, to, uh, what slide did you want me to go to, Natalie? Um, can you go to the domains first? And yeah. Then I'll just... I think it was this one, yeah. Um, was it? I think it's before the examples. Oh yeah, I think it's over here. Hold on. There we go. Okay. 
so the history portion, um, just letting you know, I'm not a history major, but I can kind of help you by sharing what I did. Um, there's three main domains, and it's broken up into world history, U.S. history, and California history. Um, don't think that you have to study more for like world history because it's so much, because you'll you'll see questions about all three domains. Um, you can go to the first one, I believe. So this one? Yeah, okay, so here's an example of a world history question. Um, they do ask a lot about like early ancient civilization. I found a video on YouTube that explained a lot about what that was like. Um, but this question is just asking like, what contributed to the birth of a civilization? And if you want to read the questions or the answers for a minute, um, the answer here is A, because if you go to the next slide, um, before people used to have to hunt to gather their food, um, so they, they weren't able to settle down in one place. But as soon as there was no more need for hunting and gathering, people were able to settle down, build, build um, their homes, um, because they were able to start farming. And that's what led to culture across the world. And then can I add something really quick, uh, Natalie, now that you're here mm -hmm. on this part? So on the civilization, um, for, for world history, civilization is the common theme across the whole, that whole domain, right? So if you get a question whether it has to do with, uh, you know, Rome, Greek, um, Mesopotamia, like any of that, if, if, all, if you can always remember what is it that all these, um, I guess, places had in common, it's always gonna have, it always falls back on their civilization, right? How they, how they came about and then also the geography part. That was like one thing that I noticed a lot of the questions that I received was they were trying to, I guess, compare kind of how they, how civilization is different for all of them, but it came like across the same way, you know, like how they all came up um, through civilization somehow. So like here it would be the hunting and gathering, right? They went from hunting and gatherers to civilization. And then that's how civilization, you know, happened across all board for uh, people during the early civilization times. Um, and then geography is another one too. I, on my subset, I got a map, like a blank map, and I had to identify which region was which. Um, so it, that was another key thing that I had to study was, I guess, recognizing where um, each civilization formed at what time, right? That was like another thing that I saw that was pretty common um, on the exams when I took them. Yeah, so be familiar with um, older maps and trade routes. That's also important. Mm -hmm. um, I think one map to keep in mind is Alexander the Great, and um, it's kind of showing like how he conquered um, and what he conquered, and there's there's a specific map, and I'm sure if you Google it, you'll find it. Um, and just save it to your phone, look at it every day, print it out, put tape it up on your wall, whatever helps you. But yeah, maps are important. Thank you, Mariela. Mm -hmm. What's the next? Uh, the next one? Mm, I think it's toward the end, like right before the constructed responses. Okay. Like the last one. This one. Um, the one before. Maybe the one before. Go back. Two. This one? Go back, go back one. Okay. Before this one, yeah. This one. Yeah, so this one, which of the following led to the capture of General Cornwallis and was the last major battle of the American Revolutionary War? This is an example of US history. Yes, you do have to be familiar with all of the battles. Um, and there are a lot, but just know like the basics, like who died, 
who was in charge, um, you know, what was the most important thing that happened during the battle. And here, if you go to the answer, mm -hmm. So there are 10 battles, there were 10 battles. Um, and then this one, the Battle of Yorktown is, is um, significant because this is what, when General Cornwallis died. So it's just like little things like that that make it significant just to remember those. And then, then you'll remember which, um, which battle it was. And then we could do a constructive response. Did you have one exactly? Was it the first one or the second one? The first one? Okay. Okay, so this is talking about the Roman Empire. Um, this is an example of what the question will look like. And what I did here was I broke it up into three parts for you to kind of easily kind of outline how you're going to write your constructed response. So first, it wants you to identify the three causes and then select two of them and explain why they were um, significant as, as for the, um, in relation to the collapse of the Roman Empire. So this is kind of how I broke it up when you're answering it. I listed the three, and then you choose two, and then you just go into detail about it. And that's really how to, to the point you have to get, and that's all they're really looking for. Yeah, and then one thing really quick about the, the history and social science responses is that um, you have to really be knowledgeable on all three domains because I remember on my first CSET exam that I took, one of the constructive responses, um, it cross-referenced from um, California history and, um, and um, world history, right? And so I was here thinking, I'm like, okay, well, the question is only going to be like, if it's about California history, it has to be with something that just occurred here in California, right? And so little to my <laughs> expectation, I actually had a cross-reference question where it had to do with something that happened in California, but that um, also had to do with something that happened in, in world history, right? So uh, just be prepared for those type of questions too, where you have to, um, I guess correlate both or any of the three domains with um, like just what happened in the past and how the past now affects us today, right? So it'd be like a world history issue that shaped California in some certain aspect, right? So that was like one of the things that I that I actually um, was kind of shocked to see because I was just expecting you know a question just specifically on that domain, but it didn't happen like that. So I don't know if yours were different, Natalie, but that was like something that happened to me. And I thought that was kind of important because I was like, oh, like I didn't, I'm good at California history, but not so great in the world history. So I didn't have enough like support and evidence to back up my constructed response. So there I was lacking, you know, um, like evidence or support, whatever it may be. And so those are just, you know, those are little things that also pop up and just to be aware of when you're writing your responses. Yeah, and one more thing to remember that's important is try to try to make like a list of important people in the world. Like one of my constructed responses was about Confucius, and a lot of people don't even know who he was. Um, so that's that's why it's important to just like if you if you can get a hold of like a sixth grade history book, that would be very helpful. Um, I don't know. If, I don't know if we have any in the office. I think we used to. We do have a couple, like actual just history books. Um, mm -hmm. I think we do have a couple though. So I think um, those are available for students. Yeah, but that's that's very helpful because you know, as college students, we obviously don't remember what we learned in elementary school. It was a long time ago. Yeah, definitely. Um, 
So that's kind of like what we wanted to go over. Um, I'm not sure if you girls want to add anything else. I think the next step from here um, for a lot of you is kind of um, set up plans. Um, I think, you know, Marila talked about she spent two months studying, you know, and sometimes I understand some students already have registered for the test or have their registration soon. Um, but you do want to definitely go in to these tests, at least with, you know, seeing the practice test. Um, so I can actually go ahead and do that now and kind of show you uh, where you can find those practice tests through the CTC website. Um, I don't think I do. Um, so I'll go ahead and just actually open up a new one. You can actually just Google CSET um, multiple subject. Um, and um, so the one you want to go through is your CTC exams website. Again, you want to get familiar with it if you have not been here. Um, talks a little bit about what we talked. It has the domains. It has everything. Um, you can check for dates here, tells you everything we kind of told you money-wise, the length of it, and if you scroll all the way at the bottom. We didn't talk about the score. We talked about the score, but we didn't say that you needed 220 to pass the subtest. I will say that I read into it. So your, it's the, the grading, just like CBES, it's a little like weird and, and hard to explain, but what they do is they take your raw score and convert that into a scale from one, 100 to 300. Um, to pass the CSET, regardless of actually whatever CSET it is, you need a 220 to pass. So it's a little hard to like really understand how they grade you. Um, but again, just remember 70% of it is multiple choice and 30% of it is from your constructive response. So that's exactly how it's divided into. So if we go down all the way down, uh, you see the view uh, preparation materials. Um, and so it has, again, the practice test, both interactive and uh, PDF format. The cool thing about the uh, interactive is that um, it times you, and I think that's a good way of um, knowing time management on these tests, because again, they are lengthy. So you can see also practicing um, how it's going to be structured so you can um, understand how computer-based works, like you'll be sitting in front of a computer taking the test. So the cool thing is you have all 56 questions for subset one, and it tells you, it gives you three hours to take this test. Um, so I think that's a good way, because I think it's three hours, right? Am I right? So it's a, exactly perfect, it's a long test, but I think if you're ready to take it after um, like looking at the practice test, I think it's a good way to practice both timing uh, for yourself as well as just kind of really understanding um, each problem. I'm not sure if you wanted to add something else that I missed, but that's basically what you want to maybe start doing um, is looking at the practices, taking the practice test. Um, if you have any questions, um, I'll put up our email again please feel free to um, email us. We are available to tutor. Is our email on here? Our email is not on here. So let me actually add it. That's Karina's email. Our email is edq at csus.edu. Let me make it big so everyone can see. Um, so you wanna email us. We all have access to this email right here. So, um, you know, we all kind of um, email you back if you need any questions. Um, I said this yesterday, sometimes students, you know, don't only really want to do the Zoom meeting. If you have questions, you can send us a picture, and I'm sure one of us can reply back to you. Um, so, yeah, I don't know if anyone has questions right now. Um, you can ask questions right now or definitely email us, and we can send you more information. Yeah. Mariela, Natalie, are we good? Did you want to add something? We're good. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I think the only thing that I that I just want to emphasize again, you guys, is um, the time time studying um, the time you spend studying, um, because again, the studying really really helps a lot. These are the, these are type of exams where you really have to devote your time 
to studying and learning the material because it's just, it's so much, right? And, and the thing is, we're not really used to these kinds of exams um, because, you know, usually when you're taking an exam, for the most part, you're focusing on one subject. Here, it's, you know, more than one subject. So um, I just, from personal experience, um, I just, to me, the, the studying and the time I spent studying, I think definitely is what helped me prepare myself to take these tests and to, um, you know, pass them. And, and another thing too is just, um, it really is uh, just your confidence, right? These tests can be intimidating, um, and to me they were, but I just, you know, it's that confidence that you give yourself. Um, and again, we're here to support you. We've been through it. Uh, and we'll, you know, guide you the best that we can. Um, and yeah, I mean, if you guys need anything, any questions, any strategies, any resources, whatever it may be, uh, we're here to help you guys. Yeah. So that's, that'll be it for today. Um, again, tomorrow we'll be going through subset two, which is math and science. Um, I'll be there with the math. Um, I, you girls, Mariela and Natalie will be here because they have taken the test. Um, I can go over more in depth about what the math is, and I believe Esme might be here, and she can talk a little bit more about the specifics in science, um, but Mariela and Natalie can talk about the expectations that they're looking for, what they did to study as well. Um, so again, we'll go over subset two tomorrow and subset three on Friday. Um, if there is any more, if there is not any more questions, um, we can call it a Zoom. But thank you everyone for um, joining in and being here. I hope these, um, these are helpful tips. Again, just let us know if you have any questions or email us. Okay, I hope everyone has a great day. I'll hopefully see thank you here. tomorrow as well. Bye everyone. Bye. Bye. Hey. Hey. Uh, so, um, Rebecca told me that she got, she had to go Yeah. Uh, and she wanted to meet after, or, um, but I mostly was, if I wanted to meet was just to see if you had any questions about today. Um, so, I mean, they're kind of similar to what, how we do them normally in person, except we go a little bit more in depth about like the practice questions. A lot more in depth we do a lot more practice questions with them and then we also have just a lot more student engagement so a lot of times it's like we ask them to to like answer and stuff like that um, but basically this is kind of our workshops so right? you want to talk about the basic skills sometimes a lot of students come in and they don't know what CSET is at all so we have to go through like the background of the information and and stuff like that so I'm glad you were able to be here to kind of see how it goes um, I don't know if you have any questions. I do have one question. Yeah. So compared to the CBES, this, um, the questions at least, consist of a lot like more intricate, like precise answers compared to like the broader questions on the CBES. Yeah. So I was wondering, like, when you guys like refer students to um, the study materials, do you think the books alone and like, you know, the YouTube videos, of, um, like, will that alone answer like the more intricate details of the questions? So like the poetry one, when it was asking about like, iambic pentameter and then like the assonance would you say like and do you suggest like tell students you have to like know everything or is it just like more like a general stuff when studying yeah it's tough um i think it truly depends on the student and how they study um because it i think um they're all the same except they explain it different uh so some students like the books some students hate the books um, some students like the YouTube videos, like Natalie, she was all about the YouTube videos. And so I think it was just, I think it's just different resources and different explanations. They all kind of talk about the same thing in a way, but they just have different explanations. Um, so I think I, we tell students to try everything and mm -hmm. find their um, kind of study habit that they like and that they enjoy where they're learning and not just like, oh, I'm studying for this test. Um, but it's tough to say because it's such a like a random test that has so many different things so we kind of suggest going through everything um because even the practice test alone for this test online is not going to help you i've heard that a lot of times so we we're like look at it but definitely like 
use other resources um, because of the fact that I think one alone is not really going to help you. I think you have to do more than two or three. Makes yeah. sense. Yeah. So, this, so to me, it seems like they're just going to, they're not going to be able to just rely on the test alone, like the practice test, like even if it's from different books, they're going to have to like do like their own little studying and like research on like. Yeah, the mm -hmm, definitely. So that's, that's our go to, that's our go to like, oh, just do the practice test. But, you know, definitely email us and, you know, go to YouTube because it's kind of tough, but it won't, um, it won't just, um, I totally forgot to stop recording.